on the page. Yep. We've just cleared into Croatia. We used Novigrad and the dock was really easy to pull up to. The police were on the dock and the harbour master was across the road. So in total, I think we were there for about 20 minutes and now we're on our way heading for Split. So today is Friday. We've got about 33 hours of transit ahead of us, which will have us arriving in Split at 11.30 p.m. on Saturday. Not ideal, so we might slow down or stop for a night, which will put us getting there on Sunday. We're just gonna see how we track and how we go. Um, but happily for now the sea state is still quite calm but when we cross between like sort of the Pula area and Crest apparently it gets a little bit bumpy so yeah we're gonna have something to eat now, pack up, clean up and then just enjoy a little bit because I think the sail's going up soon. It's a little bit sunny up in the helm where Rose insists on sitting, so we did buy her something to protect her eyes, and it's just so damn cute. What do you think? See? I've had a mix. I've been explaining to her. Look, she understands. Look, she's not. She's so to... cute. She's not trying to get them off. Look, look. What do you think? See, I have one. Oh, that's okay then. Uh, oh no, trying to knock oh, them off. Oh, oh, oh. You are gonna knock my phone off! Oh, forgive us for trying to save your eyes, Rose. Oh, you are her naughty dog! Ooh, mm. chino. Snook. Oh, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone, you put these ridiculous glasses on to save my blue eyes. This is fun. This is fun being a criminal. Driving without a license. Trying to bite mooring lines. Voiding the warranty. Viciously attacking the crew and captain. <laughs> the dolphin hunter returns. So cutie. This is kind of the perfect end of the first day back in the water. Tonight we're sailing through the night, so Trent's on watch now, then it'll be Tyne and then me. Tomorrow night, hopefully we're going to anchor before we make it into split on Sunday. So so happy. <laughs> For the dolphins, sweetie. Where are the dolphins? Go on. We've spent today slowly motor sailing up the coast of Croatia, and we're now about 29 more. Oh, it's nice. And we're now about 29 nautical miles from Split. Uh, two days. Rose needs a walk and Trent needs to get off the boat. Um, we debated whether or not to anchor uh, further back, but uh, we just decided that we're going to go all the way in. It's quite a well-established anchorage and we do have the daylight bar aboard. 
So yeah, by about 1.30 Sunday morning, we will be in Split. She's so cute. <laughs> It's 7.30 in the morning, we didn't go to bed until after 1.30 but this morning our friends arrived in the anchorage and they kindly came and woke us up with their tender. So that seems to have been the perfect excuse to finally launch ours for the first time ever, which is pretty exciting. You've had one sip of coffee. It's just pure joy running through your veins right now, isn't it? I need the key there. You need the key? Yeah. You got so excited you didn't even get the key. No, I didn't think it would all happen this quickly and now I'm looking at it I just want to drive it. This is good, Rose. Come on. So small. <laughs> First act off to harass the neighbors. Jump. Jump, jump, jump. Good job. Jump. These tenders are pretty good. Yeah. It's gonna keep them down. Yeah, they tend to want to pop up. Yeah, because the water. Yeah. How funny is how it vibrates through the aluminium hull. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Oh, that's a happy looking dog you've got behind it's you. Some rubber in it. Yeah, that does. Yeah. This was the first chance we'd had to use the tender after ordering it almost two years earlier. Today's been pretty full on. Um, I just got back from school camp with 55 12 year olds, so I'm already pretty tired. And when I arrived home, Trent and Tynan told me that this has arrived today. So we're gonna start getting this brand new tender off of the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the difference between mine and yours doesn't seem like much when you pick them up like this. Okay, so the deal with that boat there is that the person that we bought our boat off, which is here, he actually got another order from someone else in Western Australia. That person is from Geraldton. So Geraldton is about five hours north of us, um, especially by truck, which is a bit slower than the cars. And he came out and just told this guy, I'm sorry, but I can't deliver. And he told this guy like a couple of weeks ago and he ordered his boat around the same time as us. So this boat was built sitting over east and he's getting told, I'm sorry, I can't deliver it to where you live. So beyond frustrating, we only found out that part of the story because the guy from Oceancraft accidentally rang us to tell us he couldn't deliver our boat to Geraldton, which is obviously the wrong place. So we've had his boat delivered here as well. Turns out he owns a 38 foot FP Fontaine Pajot. So that's where that little one is going. Once the tender arrived, it became evident that we needed to do a little bit of work to reinforce the welds and tidy some of them up. We also started with the customization projects we had in mind, including doing a few that the manufacturer had forgotten to get done. When it was time to start preparing to leave the country, we packed the tender into the sea container along with everything else we planned to take. 
It was then shipped to Europe and we didn't see it for just over a year until it was finally unpacked in Croatia. From there, it was moved to Monfalcone, where we put it on the hard stand as well and continued working on it alongside doing our work on Lager. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on. No! When we relaunched, the tender was launched. Now that we're in Croatia, we can start using the tender as we'd always intended, to be a multi-purpose vessel that acts as our daily transport, as well as a water sports vessel capable of taking us fishing, scuba diving, and even wakeboarding. So we got this MFD, the Garmin one, because it was on special. The sonar transducer, uh, like, does a pretty picture of the bottom, which is cool, because you can glance at it and see, like, rough contours especially at night when you're in and around complex areas and reef and rocks and marina. We had to reinforce all this, re-weld it, lift it up, um, put struts in so it didn't just wobble back and forwards, uh, re-weld the top of it so you could put like a whatever that stainless steel cleat thing is which is super cool. Uh, we put water, water tends to come up over the front of boats like this from my experience I assume that so we put this here which actually stops water running down the front. So we put the front hatch in. We put these lifting points on. We put rod holders on. This rod holder is actually specifically positioned. Our friends gave us this really cool, um, like cutting fishing board. Oh, it's just so good. We've, we've orientated it so that the, with all the fish guts or goo from the bait will just run out over the side and not actually go back in the boat. So over here, past this absolute pinnacle of excellence, this is the anchor holder I, ma I made. I kind of just sketched what I wanted, found this piece of rubbish in the backyard, chopped it up, and it looks like a whale. Here we have a winch. So we've got a fully stainless steel, like one ton winch here that we've welded on the front. So you just get the spectra off this, put the spectra on that, which I've just realized we've locked tied it with 273, so it's not gonna work. <laughs> No, <laughs> Whoops. So this here is perfectly aligned with the center point of the weight of the boat and then use this as the, we'll bury it and then pull it to the anchor and then we'll move the anchor. It'll be glorious. We bought these before we left Australia and it makes the front of it look like some sort of weird attack robot. This cleat you have to have because if you put the anchor out you only want it at a certain length. So what a lot of people do, like my dad, is they'll have 100 meters of rope and then swear and fight through it 3,000 times in their life until they get stress wrinkles. What you do is you have your anchor not, not in a pile of stuff. You have it in a cool thing like this that I made. People will probably start selling these now, just making them. I want commission. <laughs> um, no, you throw your, you, you get your anchor out of your anchor launcher, throw your anchor, ten over, meters. overhand throw, up to 10 meters. <laughs> so you can get your uh, three no, meter And then when you've worked out how long you want it to be, this rope's too short by the way, <laughs> but if it were longer, you just clean it off. In there, there's a fuel tank, which is perfectly orientated so that it always sucks the most fuel out. And we put the floor in as well, so you're not standing in water or operating in water. We Growing up in Australia, water sports are naturally a really big part of life on the coast. So uh, Trent and Tynan and I, we all grew up, you know, snorkeling, swimming, things like that. And Trent and I also grew up with our parents having boats. And we both learned how to water ski from a relatively young age. And as we got older, that progressed into wakeboarding. So then when we all became friends, wakeboarding became an important part of our life. You know, we didn't have a gym membership. The three of us had wakeboard park memberships. Uh, we went on a wakeboarding holiday to Thailand. So it was something we didn't really want to have to give up when we moved on the cat. So our attention turned towards the tender. So yes, we have the aluminium tender. We tried to get a motor that was big enough to be able to tow us, but obviously there's that doubt until you try as to whether a 30 horsepower motor can pull 
an 80, 90 kilogram person on a wakeboard. So the boys just grabbed it, set it up, gave it a shot, and I've just looked out the window to see that, yes, it is possible to pull someone on a wakeboard behind our tender. I'm so out of shape. <laughs> I'd like to pull you out the water. Did you just say you're shark fishing with Tynan out the back? I don't know if a shark would want to eat him. Oh, oh, jump it up and get I'm it extremely yeah. tempted to go and get my board ready. So now that we've seen it actually works and the tender can pull someone, I've dived into the four peak, pulled my board out, thrown the boots on and I'm going to have a shot as well. This uh, area that we're in, it's huge and it's used for a wide range of water sports and there's also jet skis that have been ripping up and down all day. Mm -hmm. So we just do solid round loops and they're turning in front of our boats, so our boats like absorbing all that. But yeah, this is an awesome way to spend the day just before the sun goes down. So that was totally awesome. It's been like well over a year since I was on a wakeboard. So super stoked at that. I got up first try. Uh, yeah, Rose has never actually seen one of us take off from anything on a wakeboard before. So that was a new experience for her. And now the guys are just heading off for one last shot on the bodyboards, which we haven't tried out before. And then I think it's time for a barbecue. Push the dog, you wait till the dog wants to join in. <laughs> <laughs> 